Taylor at Go Power Sports. Today I'm going to show you how to build the Mega Moto 212 mini bike kit. We're gonna dive right into it. This is the Mega Moto 212 Pro. So you've got your, your front suspension, torque converter. It comes with all that. All you need to make this kit complete is an engine. So we're gonna start by doing the front tree. First thing we're going to do is grease the bearings. This is high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease. Oil in the shaft. This top one, we're going to actually pack this one the way you're supposed to. That bottom one, if it wasn't pressed on, you could pop it off, but it's easier just to pack it around on that one. The race on these frames is already installed on the top and bottom. Okay. From here, slide your tree up. This first piece acts as a cap to keep the grease in there and debris away from your bearing. This top nut is what sandwiches your bearings into those races. If you go too tight, you can crush them, you can damage them. But you definitely don't want to leave, leave them loose. Typically, you'll tighten it down snug, ride it, and then they'll wear in and you can re-tighten it after the first ride or two. But basically, just draw it down snug, make sure it's not too tight. That's what you're looking for. Next, you put on the top plate. Washer. And the cap. Now this we're going to leave a little loose until we get the forks up in here. There's a shoulder on these forks. This shoulder has to go inside the top plate. After those are tight, you can go ahead and tighten this top crown, then we'll cinch these down to clamp onto the fork tubes. Handlebars are tight. They are centered in the risers. 
uh, drawn down on both sides. Now we just tightened up the bottom nut on the risers. Next thing we're gonna do is bolt on the front caliper. To do that, you run your hose and caliper through the left side of the forks. Your hose then goes in this clamp with the little rubber guide. After you have this one tight, you can go ahead and put on the second guide. Six mil bolt, you're gonna use an eight mil socket or wrench. Before you bolt on the caliper, I like to use a little bit of the blue Loctite. This is definitely one of the last things that you want coming off of your bike. Start each one by hand. And this impacts on the lowest setting. That feels good. Okay, next step, we're gonna hang the front wheel. Before we do this, we're gonna loosen up these clamps so that you can spread or close in your forks. On the front axle, you'll receive two spacers. They're the same in length. You'll have one on either side of the wheel. Go ahead and hang the one on the non-brake disc side. Roll in your front wheel, pick it up, guiding the disc into the caliper. After you have the wheel back in, tightens back up on the forks. Final step, we already tightened up the brake, we've got the line ran, we've got the fork cinched down, and we're gonna tighten up the axle bolt. That's a 17 on the nut side and a 14 for the axle bolt head. These bearings do have a crush sleeve in, in between them in the wheel, so you can get this nut pretty tight. Next step up, we're gonna make this a roller, so we'll get it back up on the stand, get the rear wheel, axle, and brake bolted in. So on this rear wheel, these are slotted. You have lines to help even, even up your rear, rear wheel for chain alignment and chain adjustment. So you're gonna hang one up just like this. Now the brake bracket. Same thing with the adjuster on this other side. We're really just getting these started. Uh, axle is still loose, wheels free spinning. Next step, run the brake caliper line through, bolt it up. 
Then we can snug up the axle a little more. Then after we get the chain on, is when we'll adjust these into our final axle tightening. Okay, so for the rear brake, you're gonna bring the caliper through here. It gets clamped all the way down. You're gonna have to run it under the frame completely. Okay, so this rear caliper has guides just like the front. You're gonna put the first one in here, the second one, This caliper comes with a little pad stop as well. So pop that out, get it started on the disc and roll it around to where it goes. We're gonna do the same thing on these, just a little dab of blue Loctite. Next step up, we're gonna get the jack shaft assembly inside of the bearing tube. From here, we're gonna put a tiny bit of grease on this jack shaft. Oil in a shaft. Wipe off a little bit of the excess grease. So on the sprocket side, first thing you're gonna put on is the washer that provides clearance between your sprocket and the bearing tube. So you got your washer, key, sprocket, and then the fender washer, lock washer, and bolt. Now from this side, you're gonna do one washer. Key. Driven pulley, washer, and nut with a tiny blue Loctite. So there's a crush sleeve in here as well, but you can still over tighten them. So draw them down until you feel a little drag and then back it up till it's free like that. Now we're gonna put on the drive chain. I'm gonna pop off the master link. Make sure you put this clip on the right way. It's got to be pointing like an arrow in the direction of the chain. So your tail end over here trails, it comes behind. Okay, now that the chain's on, we're going to get the tension correct. So you're going to use a 10 mil wrench 
and start drawing these back. Okay, so we are at the third line on this side. Okay, so we're at the third line on both sides. It's probably going to be different on your bike. Everyone's going to be different. But that's about the tension we're looking for with a new chain. Got about three eighths, maybe half inch play either way. But the main thing is that you're on the same line on both sides. That's going to give you a true running chain. After those are set, come back and do your final tightening on the axle. Next up, we're going to do the front fender and headlight. Now this headlight, unless you're running a small battery of some kind or an electric start engine with a powering coil, uh, you won't be able to run this. But we're gonna go ahead and bolt it on. So you're gonna start by putting the headlight up there and just get your two bolts in it. And the fender is going to go up onto those two same bolts. You'll need a 10 for the bolt and a 12 for the nut. Continuing on, we're going to do the chain guard that all goes on this side of the bike. We're going to do a little bit of Loctite on these. The reason I like to Loctite these is so you don't feel like you have to crush the plastic to get these all the way tight. You just kind of snug them up. Next up is the long chain guard that goes all the way to the back of the bike. So get your two longer bolts, get a little Loctite on them. Leave these fairly loose because the next piece we're going to put on connects into these. And next, <laughs> and next is the rear fender. This is a pretty hefty hardware pack that goes with this. I'm gonna start by putting your rubber bushings in the fender. These are slotted, so you press in one side. So you got rubber coming out both sides of the fender. After you get the rubber bushings in, you're going to press in your metal bushings. Press these in from the bottom side of the fender.
Just get all these started a little bit, and we'll come back. On the sides, you have a bolt, a nut, and a rubber bushing. You're going to put the rubber bushing in between the fender and this bracket. So put your bolt in, get the rubber bushing on it, line up the hole, and then put your nut on the back. We have all the bolts started and hand tight, all the bushings are in. We're gonna come here for the back, get these tight first. This is an eight mil wrench. Then move on to the front and tighten these. It's gonna be an eight mil for the bolt head and a 10 mil wrench for the nut. Next up is the kickstand. We're gonna start by hooking up the spring. And get this bolt started and tight. We're going to start by putting the pin in the bracket in the peg. Then you have to force the spring down and shove the pin through it. Washer and cotter pin. For the throttle, take a Phillips head screwdriver and take out these screws. First thing you do, back that jam nut off. Thread your cable housing into the throttle. Pull your barrel end out. This guide. Can only really go in one way. You have this round part and it's going to fill in this gap right here. This stop is what's going to rest against your guide down in the carburetor. That's the throttle all the way closed. Just get them both started and slide your throttle tube onto the handlebars. This will go to the back of the engine, we'll zip tie it up here, and it'll tie into the linkage.
This kit does not come with the engine or any of the stage one parts. It does come with the torque converter, your whole drive system. So literally everything you need is an engine. Next up is the torque converter cover mounting plates. We are gonna use a little bit of Loctite on these as well. So this kit comes with eight millimeter bolts to put on these torque converter cover brackets. If you're running a Tillotson uh, or a Honda or a Predator, you're gonna need 5 16 24. First piece of the driver, you're going to slide it on all the way. There is no spacer that you put behind. Now, some of these engines have different shoulders, so pay attention to the alignment on the two back plates of the pulleys. But this one, slide it all the way on. Get your belt. Flat side goes against the back side of the pulleys. Tapered side comes out. Next piece up is the bushing. This piece that is cut flat on both sides, that's gonna come out. Slide on your weight assembly. millimeter socket then this bolt is gonna go through this bottom hole of the cover. And then there's a little metal tab that's welded on the frame that's slotted and you put it through there. Then washer and nut on the back side. For the throttle cable, we've got it ran through where it's gonna go behind these plastic gussets on the frame, come down one of the frame tubes and then wrap back around to there. This is much easier to do with the seat off. You need to back this set screw out. Not all the way, don't let it fall out, but all the way till the hole is open. I like to grab the end of the cable with a pair of pliers and just make sure you're pulling out all the slack on your throttle. Make sure it's returned all the way to idle up here. Start that screw down onto the cable. Once you got it started, come in with a 10 mil wrench and finish tightening it. Go ahead and back out that throttle stop a little bit. Now 
Now for the wiring harness, this is going to be your top end that's going to plug into all your controls on the handlebars. This is where you're going to ground your kill switch on your engine. If you have the original Megamoto engine, like if you're doing a frame swap or something, or you have an engine with a charging coil, then you can wire this up to be able to power the headlight. But we're not going to do that with this uh, Tillotson full start engine. These are color coded, so you have your red and white. Black and white and black. And the last one. When we tidy this up at the end, we're going to stuff all these back up inside the headlight. So, go ahead and fish this down. We're going to come in through the back side of the frame. Now, this black, you're going to plug into the kill switch coming off the shroud. And then you have to ground this on the engine. We're going to ground it right on top of the engine's kill switch. So just stack these together. Put your bolt back in. This is our Coleman slash Megamoto 212 header pipe. We really designed it for this pipe, but it fits perfectly on all the Coleman's as well. It's nice. It stays pretty well tucked inside, shoots across the bike, and then your legs are way up here. So by the time it exits, you know, it's really not that close to you. Now it is always recommended, especially with a long header pipe, if you're gonna use a muffler, um, or even if you're running this pipe just by itself with no muffler, it's good to have a header brace. So for this one, we're gonna come down under the valve cover. There's a little bolt down here. that tight and then bend this up towards the header for this bike since we're running a relatively stock engine um, just a stock Tillotson with the stage one on it we chose to go with the mini muffler going to give you a quiet sound um, but it's still pretty free flowing you don't lose performance by putting this muffler on the last step of the process we're going to do before gas and oil is put on the seat it's got these two hooks up front Shove those forward and then in the back you've got two six millimeter bolts. You're going to use an eight mil socket. In this engine we're going to use 16 ounces of oil.
guys, that is our Mega Moto 212 mini bike kit at gopowersports.com. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, let us know what you thought in the comments. Please hit the like button, subscribe. Now we're going to fire this thing up, see what she sounds like, and we'll take it for a spin. Chase bike, it's a Trailmaster 125.